In this lesson, we're going to take our first look at the RESTful client against the Amazon e-commerce service. You're looking at the working file amazoncodestructure.txt because it will be useful before jumping into the code to have a sense of how it's structured. The executable jar file, amazon1.jar, has two source files therein. Those files are, of course, also compiled. The first of those is called requesthelper.java. It's basically a utility class. I'll clarify a bit more in a bit. And the second is called restfulamazon.java, and that's the class that contains main. So, with respect to overview, there's basically three things that this client has to do. The first is actually the trickiest. Amazon is very fussy about the URL that is sent in a GET request to do an item lookup. The item lookup is the operation that we're going to perform. In particular, the information that's contained in the query string attached to the GET request has to be formatted in a very precise order. If there's any mistake in the formatting, Amazon basically rejects the request. So the key value pairs have to be sorted. They have to be base64 encoded. There has to be an appropriate timestamp, all of that sort of thing. I've delegated all of that low-level work to the request helper class. So that class is basically a black box for us. There's no really important lesson to be learned from looking at the details. It just does what it has to do to make the request work. The second chunk of code uses the java.net.url connection class. That's a standard library class. And it's well suited to set up a network connection to Amazon in order to send the request and get the response. So it's really straightforward, as we'll see momentarily, and it's ideally suited for what we want to do. Finally, when the response comes back from Amazon, it comes back as a relatively large and complicated XML document that needs to be parsed. And this particular example, I'm using a so called DOM or tree based parse. And again, I'm relying upon one of the standard Java classes to do that. Let's look at the code. This second working file is called Amazon1Code1.txt. The full source code is available as noted in the jar. Let me just remind you about the invocation here. The way you run this client from the command line is as Java minus jar, Amazon1.jar. And then as command line arguments, you provide your access ID and your secret key. Those are picked up, of course, in main. Let me jump now here to the end, to line one. They're picked up in main, and my program then passes them off to the function called lookup stuff, which is at line two. So as you can see, the lookup stuff method receives the access key and the secret key. It immediately calls below the constructor for the request helper, which is going to do the dirty work. And we'll see that again in a second. Starting at line three, we create a map. So just a collection of key value pairs, which contains the information that Amazon wants. So for example, the particular service that we want is officially called AWS e-commerce service, AWS for Amazon Web Services. The current version you can see there. The operation we're going to perform is called an item lookup. We're looking up a book. And the ID is the numerical value that identifies that item. Once all of the relevant data are put into the map, the request helper is used to put everything in proper order, timestamp it. Then we're ready to connect to Amazon. And that's done in a method called request Amazon. That's called line five. The argument is the string representation of the URL to get to Amazon. So down at line six, request Amazon receives that string URL. At line seven, we use the standard Java class URL in order to parse that string. So if the parse is successful, in other words, the URL is properly formatted, we get back a URL instance, and that can be used then to open up a connection to Amazon. So that occurs in just one line of code, as you can see at line eight, very convenient. The line below it, which sets the input to true, does that because we're going to be receiving input back from Amazon. In effect, the XML document that Amazon's going to send us in response. 
The next task then is to read that response. So to that end, I create a buffered reader. So that's going to read text in effect. And then in a while loop, I iterate until I get the full response back from Amazon. This is basic networking, of course. I have no idea if Amazon is going to send the whole thing in one chunk, the whole thing in three or four chunks. So we go through a while loop until we've gotten all of the chunks. At this point, the response returned all the way down at the bottom is the string representation of the XML document. The next job is going to be to parse that document to extract the information that we want.